evening. It's Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Cain, and our scripture is Genesis chapter 4. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, What have you done? What have you done? To have the sovereign creator of heaven and earth lay that question on you must have felt like a tsunami, an earthquake, and the end of the world, atomic explosion all rolled into one. When God asked the question about his brother, Cain's answer, am I my brother's guardian, was of a classic category known as open mouth, insert foot. Cain tried to deflect the question and somehow dodge his responsibility for killing brother Abel. But God, ever existing in truth, rolled back the foolishness of Cain's fig leaf defense he'd learned from his parents and revealed Cain's raw guilt. There are times you can choose to run, but you can never hide from God. My bride and I do the grocery shopping together on the day when our grocery store has a discount for seniors. It's wall-to-wall blue hair and walkers. At my age, I can say that. This week, the shortest line had three baskets in front of us. Elizabeth went off to find tofu while I waited. As I dutifully guarded our basket's spot in the checkout line from a geriatric line-jumping woman in a motorized cart, I watched the cashier, a tall, pleasant young man. I listened closely to know if he's carding the customers to prove entitlement to the discount. (laughs) I don't get asked about my age much anymore. The computer running everything in those stores has my name, birth date, social security number, and firstborn's fingerprints. It knows I'm older than Noah. When it was my turn to check out, the young man greeted me with a smile and asked, paper or plastic? I grinned back and gave him my usual sarcasm. I said, surprise me. And so he did. I looked at his name badge, and in this chain store, it's first names only on the ID badges, and my attendant's name was easy, Kane. He did surprise me because I'd never met anyone whose parent had forgotten the name you lay on your kid will follow him all the days of his life. And then I looked at Cain's bagger putting my groceries in plastic. He was Joshua. And here I am, a preacher with Genesis and Exodus staring me in the face. This was going to be fun. I opened with... How did your boss ever manage to get you two to wear Cain and Joshua badges in the same line? Cain grinned a little, shrugged his shoulders, and scanned the tofu package. Joshua just gave me a blank look. I surmised I was facing two kids not familiar with the basics of Old Testament 101. Entering the aforementioned open mouth insert foot zone, I just couldn't leave it there. Pointing to Joshua, I said to Cain, Good thing his name isn't Abel. He would have called in sick today. Nothing. Silence. Scanning beeps. Apples beep. Cereal beep. Spaghetti squash beep. Pressing forward in the downward spiral destined to wind up in discount day hell, I opened my mouth one more time. I guess you never get that about your name. Cain's eyes rolled a little, he sighed almost inaudibly, and without expression, still scanning, he said, every single day. (sighs) As a pastor, and more importantly as a Christian man, I sometimes forget that when I pull the trigger on my words, without considering where those words might end up, I could be doing more damage than help. About now, my words are lodged somewhere deep in my windpipe. For you today, recognizing we live in a cultural minefield these days and our words can be like matches in a dynamite factory, we need to remember that behind the name tags reside the lives of those for whom Jesus Christ died. Our words do matter. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.